African and African Studies AAAS program. She is the winner of the 2001 to 2002 Fulbright Award and a 2003 to 2004 postdoctoral fellowship from the American Association of University Women AAU Educational Foundation and a 2009 to 2010 Humanities and Arts Research Program, HARP. From 2004 to 2007, Dr. Truman served as diversity coordinator for the College of Arts and Letters. More recently, Dr. Truman is the recipient of a 2018 to 2019 Senior Fulbright Award to South Africa, working with Northwest University NWU. Particularly, she worked firsthand with the Department of English faculty and students on the Mabutu campus, yet also worked with faculty and students on the other two NW campuses in the city of Foxprom and Va. She taught courses on sociolinguistics and presented lectures on our current research, politeness and impoliteness within the African-American speech community. She advised honors and postgraduate students on their thesis and doctoral dissertations and developed the partnership agreement between MSU, which is the University, uh, Michigan State University, and NW, pending finalization. Professor Trudman serves as the vice president and president elect for the International Gender and Language Association. I e. Actually, that's pronounced in Gala. Language and women and language. Currently, she is working on integrations of politeness in politeness within the African American speech community, which she has presented in special lectures at conferences, and which is a focus for our current book manuscript. I want to welcome Associate Professor Dennis Trudman as she says a word of welcome to us. And I want to thank you once again for your patience and making sure you are here right on time and to say hi. <laughs> this is a very great honor to us and we appreciate it. I'm sure the fellows are really, really happy. I am seated at a very exceptional place. So you won't be seeing my face, but you'll be seeing the faces of all of the other wonderful young people there. And they are really hoping to hear a word or two from you. Welcome again, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It is definitely a privilege and an honor um, to be in this auspicious, to partake in this auspicious occasion. Thank you for the invitation. I am delighted to be here. And I do have a few words to share with you. Um, in the end, I wanted to play a video, and so I don't know if I can do that. Uh, and uh, yeah, just some words that I want to share with you. Um, so the title of my message, the main idea that I want you to get from today is take the Lord with you everywhere you go. Can I get an amen, somebody? Okay. Um, I prayed about this occasion and I asked the Holy Spirit about what to say, to share with you today. I want to check in with everybody. Do you know that the Holy Spirit is real. Is there anybody in the space that knows that? Yes, Mom. Thank you. Can you hear me well enough? Yes, Mom. Thank you. Okay. So the word says in 1 Corinthians 2 and 10, 
These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. And so if we reflect on that and if we deconstruct those words, it's pretty awesome, everybody. It's pretty awesome that there is a spirit, a spirit of truth. And that spirit searches the deep things of God. What other spirit would I want to be led by? This is the spirit of God. And we serve a magnanimous God. And the spirit searches the deep things of God. Oh, yeah, that's the spirit that I want to be led by. So I was led to share words of wisdom premised in the word of Yahweh Elohim. And so sometimes I, instead of saying God, God is a generic word. I want to personalize it. And my preference is to call our Heavenly Father by different names. And one of the names is Yahweh Elohim. And just know that when I use that particular phrase, I'm talking about the living God. Um, there are other names of God. And so that's one of the ones that I use. So I, I want you to recognize and and. and know that I am a professor, yes, at Michigan State University. I want you to know that my power and success does not spring forth from those credentials. It doesn't. I have learned over the trajectory of my life in academia that putting Yahweh, Elohim, and King Jesus and the Holy Spirit first is the way to exude life. I do not place my living in academic credentials. Those credentials do not have power that comes from above. I want to pass on to you also to live your lives for others. This is part of what our Heavenly Father wants us to do. My sister used to say a poem, and I memorized part of it. Others, Lord. Yes, others. Let this my motto be, that I may live for others so that I may be more like thee. I want you to take those words. I want you to live by those words. And believe me. Exuding those words, living those words, bring forth good results. I believe the Holy Spirit is calling revival. This is something that I also want to pass on to you today. There is a revival coming to the land. And you, as believers, will partake of that revival if you truly serve Yahweh Elohim and King Jesus in spirit and in truth. Prepare yourselves, each and every person that is graduating, each and every person in this space. Prepare yourselves for revival. Dedicate time every day, every day, praying, fasting, reading, and studying the word. Of course, you don't have to fast every day. You fast according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. But every day, do pray, read the word, study the word. Don't be fake with Yahweh Elohim. You can't be anyway. He knows the words and the meditation of your hearts. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 139, before a word is formed on my tongue, you, Holy Abba, you know it completely. And so this revival is going to be for those 
that love our Heavenly Father and seek him in spirit and in truth. Holy Abba and King Jesus know every word before we speak them. I admonish you, please, keep it real. Keep it 100 with the Holy Spirit and with yourselves. As you walk the walk in this journey called life, take the living Yahweh Elohim. Take El Chai with you. Seek his face in spirit and in truth. And I have found success in living my life that way. I don't place my credentials first. Every day, I seek our Heavenly Father. Early in the morning and before you rest your head, pray, read, listen, and be led by the Spirit of Yahweh Elohim. The Holy Spirit is your friend. Don't forget that. The Holy Spirit is a living entity. Just like King Jesus, the Holy Spirit is alive. I'm asking you, tap into the Spirit of Yahweh Elohim. He is accessible. The Holy Spirit is accessible to you. There will not be a revival without the leading of the Holy Spirit. So those are my words that I wanted to share with you. And I want to see, is it possible that I can share uh, a video? And this is part of what the Holy Spirit gave me this morning also. Yes, you, you can go ahead. Okay. Okay. Am I sharing my screen now? Uh, let's see. I'm used to Zoom. I'm trying to find. Okay. Thank you very much. And, and so you've seen some dramatization of this idea of the Holy Spirit, and it's it's not a lie. It's it's not fake. I I truly. And sincerely encourage you. Yeah, take the Holy Spirit. Take our Heavenly Father. Take King Jesus. Everywhere you go. Get success? Oh, yeah. It follows. It follows the words of Yahweh Elohim. It follows the Holy Spirit. It follows King Jesus. I don't give my success to my credentials. They don't belong there. I know the good success that I have had as a result of praying, fasting, seeking, asking in spirit and in truth. And so I leave you, I pass a baton on to you today. And I, I, I implore you, take that baton, hold fast, run the good race, run swiftly, don't drop the baton. I wish you all good success and pass it on to somebody else. Thank you. I hope there's something that you've received today. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for your listening and your patience. Um, I think we can do better.
So if you are just joining us, there's a reason why I'm seated here. Hmm? Simple. If I stand and use the microphone, the echo is going to affect um, what she will hear from me and you. So I want to thank you, Dr. Dennis, for sharing that experience of yours with us. On, um, I think a few days ago, I was in Lagos, Nigeria for a marketing conference. And by one of the uh, really popular persons that some of us would know, I spent a few days and we heard from about 90% um, of those who spoke were women, wonderful women. And we have, we have two other men who spoke, including the founder of Pantech. How many of you have heard of Pantech yet? There's this Julie of a girl that's, you know, very, very incredible with her advertisement of car parts, you know, if you have cars and all that. So he really did share something. And there are two things I picked from that marketing conference. The first one was that all of the successful women who spoke there, when I say successful, I'm talking about numbers. In fact, one of them was, uh, I think that we, if you boast, it's, it could be positive if you boast. So one of them positively boasted that she makes at least 11 million naira in two days. And she was able to share what she did in her business to get all her staff and everyone working with her to that point. And that is just one out of the other women who shared. And they also said, like I said, two things. The first was they appreciated their partners, husbands. They appreciated their partners for it. And all of them, every single one of them, appreciated God as a source of their success. So it is so incredible to see that sometimes even myself, um, when I want to doubt certain things about religion or spirituality, I do always ask myself one question. Why do you always have to thank God for your success? And the question comes back to me with an incredible answer. It says, if you had the power to do it alone, then you wouldn't need to thank God for your success. So what Dr. Dennis is sharing with us, and it's good to, to know that she is our first speaker for today, is that she owes all her success to God. When we were chatting on WhatsApp, she asked me a question. Uh, do you have people who worship God among the young people that are going to come? Are they Christians? Are they Muslims? I said, yes. Nigeria is a very religious country. Statistics is right there. And we appreciate you for sharing uh, a few things with us, sharing that wonderful video. I'm going to spend time to watch it again. And if you are um, very open to sharing more with the fellows, I am very happy to introduce you to them after this. And just like I have learned over the years that uh, my friend Chibuzo is here, is there something he told me one time about a lot of people who want to be successful? First, you can't do it alone. Second, there is no need for competition. There is absolutely no need for you to compete. You never see Gary Chop. You, de you de ask yourself whether another person gets granite. Chop your Gary first. Or better still, get food from someone else. Get the granite from someone else. There's no need to compete. Unhealthy competition is not what we advise for our fellows after the program. 
So we will be happy to share some moments of uh, the fellowship with you here and afterwards. And we will be so happy if any of them should send you a message, an email, or any anything um, asking for some leadership, sharing of resources, I will be happy to direct such persons to you. And I know we are quite behind time. I did save some photographs of myself with Dr. Dennis. She was the first person that took me to the uh, church in uh, Michigan State. And she introduced me to her pastor. She was really kind to me. I've enjoyed um, a lot of American meals because of her. I can't forget that salmon, by the way. And if she can do that for me in a place I wasn't so familiar with, I feel that she can do that for even more people. So thank you once again. And please, a round of applause for... Okay. Thank I you, see. everybody. Thank you. You're welcome. I see Aurelius is here. And uh, Simon, good to see you. So I know you can't see me. I'm just going to walk a little bit to the front of the camera so that you can see me. And I'm going to have my seat. How are you, David? All right. So that's the only time you're going to see me anyway. <laughs> so Dr. Jeffrey, Honorable Dr. Jeffrey Brown, thank you so much for coming. I am going to read your profiles. And you can see the wonderful people that have been waiting for you. So we are going to have two presentations from Dr. Jeffrey. And we're going to have Irelius speak with us. I see Simon. Hello, Simon. Uh, PN, thank you so much for coming. Uh, hopefully, you get to introduce yourself better. I'm going to read Dr. Honorable Dr. Jeffrey Brown's biography. Uh, let me just highlight you, though. Hello, Dr. Jeff. Can you still hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right. So I'm going to read your profile shortly. Dr. Jeffrey Brown comes from a family that taught him the importance of putting community first. His grandmother, Georgia Brown, was the first black female to attend Eastern High School and graduated from Lansing Central High School. Jeffrey's grandfather, Robert Brown Sr., retired from the city of Lansing Parks and Recreation Department, where he spent a lifetime beautifying his surroundings. Jeffrey's father, was a lifelong Lansing resident who served in the Vietnam War. His mother retired from the state of Michigan and was a proud UAW member. Jeffrey has an extensive background in leadership and program development and management. He has managed and provided services to the Oklahoma Department of Rehabilitation Services, Oklahoma Department Developmental Disabilities Services Division, U.S. Social Security Administration, Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, Community Mental Health, CIE, Tri-Country Office on Aging, and Michigan Youth Opportunity Initiative. Jeffrey has created platforms in areas of vocational rehabilitation, transitional housing, residential long-term care, life skills management, community life, living support, self-employment, income support, youth employment, and job readiness programs. Additionally, Jeffrey earned his Bachelor, Master, and Doctor of Ministry Christian Leadership 
at Kingdom University Bible Church, Bible College. He is an established speaker and co-author of Life-Changing Self-Awareness. His latest work is Be Inspired, an inspirational journal. Jeffrey was appointed public official serving on the executive committee of Ingham County Community Health Centers, a federally qualified health center, FQHC. Jeffrey oversaw 12 locations, 25,000 patients, and over 70,000 annual visits delivering care to the community's most vulnerable populations. In addition to the FQHC oversight, Jeffrey was appointed to serve on the City of Council, City of Lansing, pardon, Human Relations and Community Services Department. Jeffrey's passion for young people, for people and governance oversight and stands him to also have served on the Institutional Advisory Board of Career Quest Learning Centers, an accredited healthcare college as a board member of Disability Network Capital Area and as a past chair of Uplift uh, Youth Foundation. Currently, Jeffrey serves as a council member at large of his hometown where he serves over 112,000 constituents in the city of Lansing. His inspirational leadership and mission to uplift the city of Lansing continue in his service as a member of the committee of the whole chair and of the ad hoc on homelessness and solutions vice chair of the committee on development and planning committee on equity diversity and inclusion board member of tri-country regional planning commission executive board member of capital area michigan works and board member of the tri-country office on aging wow give me a sec to breathe in and out <laughs> please ladies and gentlemen let us welcome dr jeffrey brown thank you right. so much for thank you so much for having me today i'm extremely excited and i'm going to assume that we don't have sound because i didn't hear that round of applause can we get a little bit more can we can we get a little bit high? i didn't hear any of the applause we're ex i'm extremely excited to be here today i want to quickly before i get into sharing uh the word and the message that i wanted to give you today i wanted to quickly introduce you to my inspire global team influencing people and inspiring people all over the world we have um Helena, uh, she's in uh canada so she's just here observing as our uh, executive captain. you can wave and say hello then we have uh simon uh, who serves in multiple different roles of course Aurelius who will speak in today as well. <laughs> so I'm so glad and grateful that they are able to be here. Now we have a little bit of feet, uh David, so I don't know if you are able to And thank you, uh Dr. Denise, for joining us as well. I look forward to connecting with you. Um, so that's that's well. I hope everyone can still hear me. Can I get a head nod? Okay, fantastic. Well, I won't be long today. I'm grateful for the opportunity. Uh, but I've been sharing. I've had the opportunity to share. We all have great bios and credentials, but I've had the opportunity, my greatest privilege in life, to share um, a moment that changed my life forever. And I wanted to share that preface with you today. Every moment is not created equal, but each moment of our life is priceless because every moment is one of a kind. But a moment of inspiration can change history. My charge and challenge for you today is, are you a historian or are you the one making history? Are you gonna be a history maker? You're at a, a place in your life 
where you're you're graduating from an accomplishment and a credential but accomplishment and a credential <clears throat> is not necessarily your calling your calling and purpose is what fuels the passion that you have for education for entrepreneurship for family for opportunity what you're dreaming about and fully who you are and so many times we all have great vision or dreams and goals and we don't achieve that because we are not willing to make the sacrifice that it takes to go to the next level but today you all have made that sacrifice to go to the next level through the process of becoming empowered in career and growth opportunities but i want to challenge you today to recognize that this is simply the beginning I'm excited about this milestone in your life, and we've come all the way from across America to speak with you today. But my charge is for you to challenge yourself, to dig deep within yourself and, 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 and embrace the moment, the 60 seconds that inspired you to sit, that allowed you to accomplish graduation to sit here today. Every moment is not created equal, but each moment of our life is priceless because every moment is one of a kind. But a moment of inspiration can change history. Are you the historian or are you going to be the one making history? 60 seconds is transformational because think about a time that someone spoke into your life or the reason why <clears throat> the motivation behind you saying i want to attend this academy and i'm going to do everything that it takes to graduate and complete and i'm going to use that credential in my life to prosper successfully that has more power than what you don't have that has more power than what you don't have Many times we say, well, I don't have enough money to accomplish my goal, or I'm not educated enough, or I don't know the right people. But what if everything that you have in your moment is the fuel and the power that allowed you to transcend your situation and your circumstances and say, I'm going to apply, I'm going to get accepted, I'm going to do the work, I'm going to graduate, and then I'm going to go and change the world. I found that every great thing that I've been able to accomplish <clears throat> and excuse me, the, you know, the bio, the profile has so many accolades and accomplishments, but there's so much in there uh, that we don't have time to speak about. It's not about me, but it's about how did I get to that place? It was through inspiration, whether it's a mentor, whether it's a professor, whether it's a family member, a business person, a pastor that spoke and inspired me and let me know that I can be somebody, I can do anything if I simply believe. And so we do have the scripture that says uh, in the Holy Bible, faith without works is dead. But imagine if we walk by faith and not by sight, what can be achieved? And regardless of what your faith is today, you've had to have faith in yourself to get to the place you are now. But we know and we're in agreement from everyone in America that this is simply your beginning. I'm excited to have the opportunity to live my purpose and inspire you all and help influence your mind to have a paradigm change and a shift of the reality is yes, we're celebrating today, but it's one step in the stepping stone and the ladder towards your success and the totality of your potential. Now, how do we move from that inspired moment in our life, whatever that is, and there can be many and multiple that give us the strength and the fuel to continue down our journey and our path of extraordinary success. I found, and I've been speaking to audiences for over a decade about how to, and the power behind building a three-dimensional vision. 3D vision, three-dimensional vision. Not a flat vision that's just written on paper or posted on a wall, but something that we can truly embrace and take like this phone and hold 3D, three dimensional vision. And the way that I've defined three dimensional vision is vision, victory and value. And if I can hold those close to my heart and anything that I'm looking to achieve, I know that it's possible. Vision, 
victory and value, building a three-dimensional vision. Vision, I want everybody here to close their eyes. And I want you to think about your dreams, your goals. I want you to think about the moment that you apply uh, for the academy and the training. I want you to think about what's next and what you're believing for and what you want to achieve next. While your eyes are closed, you can still see, and that's vision. See, with our eyes, we have sight, but sight doesn't produce. It just lets us see the circumstances that we're in. But vision allows us to see what's possible in the past, present, and future. And it encourages our soul and our heart to know that it's possible because you can see it even if your eyes are closed. That's the sight of your heart, knowing that there's more to you than the moment you're in but the destiny that you're reaching towards. Then we have victory. And football is one of the largest sports all over the world. Everyone can agree. And as I begin to think about victory and we watch the sports and we want our team to win and achieve the, uh, the, the championship and, and score the goals, and we want to see the footwork with the ball and we want to see the teamwork and the leadership, but all of that does not happen on the field during the game in the championship hour. It happens in practice. It happens in repetition. It happens in training. It happens through the process. And so what is our process to be committed, to be dedicated, to take initiative, to take accountability, to be responsible? All of those small things that aren't fun, that develop us is us walking in the victory so we can see it realized in our life. The sports teams, the, the, the football teams don't get to the championship at the game. It happens before time in the work, the discipline and the dedication, just like we're in uh, here today in the graduation. And the graduation is only taking place today because you all have put in the work from believing in rejection that you could or could not get in the program to if I get in the program, will I succeed? Will I finish? Am I smart enough? Will this, this certificate or, or degree or diploma, will it mean anything for my next phase? That is the same mindset of victory that will lead you to your destiny and to the full potential that you have in life. That's what it's about. Vision, the ability to see your dreams and your actions, to encourage your soul, your spirit, your heart, to know it's possible. Victory, the hard work and the effort of practicing, preparation and process. And then you have value. So many times I've had the opportunity to work with or counsel professionals or executives or millionaire and billionaires and all these wonderful people. I've had the privilege and opportunity that has crossed my path in life, including you, because you're the now and the next. But how do we keep going down that path of victory and not giving up? What gives us the, 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 the passion to continue? It's recognizing the value of the vision that you have. So mo many times people don't realize the importance of what they're doing. So it doesn't give them the strength to keep going for five years, for 10 years, for 15, for 20 years, for a lifetime to continue to want to see that vision that you saw, even when your eyes were closed, come to pass. Value. So many times we discredit or disvalue, if that's a word, each moment of our life. So we say, oh, 60 seconds doesn't mean anything. I can waste it or I can I can not care about what I'm doing. But we know in 60 seconds you can uh, uh, do a crime and go to jail for the rest of your life. Or in 60 seconds you can become inspired and change the world. Like, like uh, in America, we have Martin Luther King who shifted our entire generations and our entire culture to say that us as people can come together and together we're better. 
Value is defining what's at stake before you get to the manifestation of victory. So that way you can continue to exercise your faith and your belief in the process through it all and through the pressure. Every moment is not created equal. To be a history maker, 60 seconds, you can change the world. But to encourage us through the process is we have to build a three-dimensional vision. Three-dimensional vision, vision, victory, and value. <laughs> and as we're walking through that journey, I was up late last night encouraging my soul and said, what is it and who are we during the process of building our vision and being inspired by a moment? And I said, I have to leave you with make sure through your journey that you care. We all know what care means, but do we really care? Care for others, care for customers, care for your job, care for the business, care for the employer, care for your country, care for your community, care for your family, and first and foremost, care for yourself. You all are doing that now. I can tell because you're getting credentials, you're getting educated, you're getting and so many years ago, I've had the opportunity to redefine care. We know what it means across the world. But for me, and I give to you today, care redefined. Commitment to ourselves and others. Assurance, if we're going to do something and say we're going to do something, we're going to do it. So people can be assured that our word means something, that our commitment means something, and that our vision, uh, when people want to invest in it or support us or mentor us or give us financial resources, they can be assured that we're going to do the best that we can. Relationship. I'm here speaking to you because of the relationship that your president and founder, David, has with myself. And with all of us uh, who are now connected in virtually. Through relationship. To speak to people, I probably charge five to 10,000 US dollars per engagement, which take that and multiply it by your money. Relationship is more important than financial resources because relationship can get you things beyond the monetary value. Myself and everyone else who's on my team has come today absolutely free. Why? Because the relationship I have with David is more important, more powerful, more uh, uh, beautiful, more enriching to my life. And opens doors for the privilege to speak to you today across the world. Than ten thousand dollars, than five thousand, than one thousand. So don't go about life trying to make money, but focus on the care through the vision because of the moment. Relationship. E, expertise. That's why I know you all care because you're already working on your expertise, whether it's formal education, informal education, mentorship, of reading, praying, deciding who you want to become and how you want to become and who you are as a person. It starts with us. I'm able to contribute and speak today and hold these offices and uh, <coughs> oversee and approve billions of dollars of all, all the, the economy. I'm a fiduciary of our local economy. Most everything has to come through my office. I'm one of eight council. <coughs> One of eight council, they're calling me on, on even today, and today's a holiday here. One of eight people, because I develop my expertise and my relationships, and people said, we know that we can count on you because I started with commitment to self, to community, to family, and to anything that I'm doing, just like you all. 
So today I only came to redefine care that you would be able to define the care that you're already walking in as you from this point forward, build a three-dimensional vision and use the strength of every inspired moment that's happened from since you've been a child to the moment that you now see yourself in. If people don't support you, if they, if you got the haters, if you have people who, who talk about you, who won't, who don't believe in you, believe in yourself through your vision, be strengthened by the value as you walk in victory. Never give up, never look back, simply believe. I thank you for this moment. You're one of my inspired moments. Another nation that I've never reached. And now because of you, I've been able to be heard. Thank you, God bless. Thank you so much, Arch. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, please, another round of applause for Russell. I understand that you are incredibly busy as a person, and it is a great honor to have someone like you to actually be um, to actually be right here with us. In case you don't know, Dr. Jeffrey Brown is a member of the city council of city of Lansing. Think about it like um, a, a parliament, what do you call it? House of Parliament, Abby? House of Assembly, thank you. So think about it that he's a member of the House of Assembly in his city. So when we were having a chat, he categorically told me, David, I normally charge $2,000 to $5,000 for a speaking session. If you go to his website, you will definitely see how much money in dollars, millions of dollars, that he has handled in terms of youth empowerment. And I was so privileged to meet him during my stories in Michigan State University. I think that apart from Dr. Dennis, I have had the most pictures with you. <laughs> I've had uh, a photograph with you when we're having dinner. I've had photograph with you uh, during the graduation ceremony. I've had photograph with you. Uh, we just bumped into one another um, in the dining hall. I've had photograph with you uh, in the council. And just to say that because of Dr. Jeffrey, I, I think we were the only Africans present at one council meeting. It was a great honor that you gave to us. If you didn't get anything from what he has said, one key thing stands out for Dr. Jeffrey, relationships, relationships. I do tell people around me that I am 100% willing to empty my bank account for somebody that I truly believe in. There was a time in our organization, we were really struggling financially, but my, um, my colleagues and staff did not know that for the last three months, about 16 of them were still receiving salaries from my personal pocket. I wasn't feeling well, Dr. Jeffrey, I tell you. I, <laughs> but I was really doing this because I believed that it was going to get better in time. I would be happy um, after this program if you can share resources and where the fellows can connect with you so that they will not lose sight of your message today and they will not lose sight of what you have shared with us today. Please, I want us to please give another round of applause for Dr. Jeff. Thank you, thank you very much. 
could uh so David, thank you so David, thank you so much. I'm so privileged. Um, could I feel in my spirit just to encourage everybody, if there's one in the audience that would like to share a quick testimony of how the message has impacted them, I think that would be profound and uh, to encourage us as we go forward in this graduation, if that would be okay. You are one person to share an experience of how it's been? Of their inspired moment and how the message I just shared impacted them just now. Okay, anybody? Maybe you share a thing or two you learned from listening to him. Okay. So call someone. Good day, everyone. My name is Prince, and I would like to share how. Sorry. Okay. Okay. My name is Prince, and I would like to share how you just impacted, <clears throat> how you impacted me just now. And through these sixty seconds, I, I did close my eyes and then envision things about what you say, even though I cannot be part of it right now. Since I can close my eyes and see it, I feel like I I can I can as well dream it and accomplish it. And it could take time though, but if I can walk through it, if I can focus on my if I can put more effort towards it, I think I will see just what you just talked about. And more of it I think the words are so encouraging, impactful and I really want to, yeah, I really want to learn more, like, through every aspect, and then, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Now, now since you, young man, since you were able to, is he still with me? No, no, grab him, grab him, grab him back. All right. Someone else wants to. Someone else wants to speak. Oh, okay. I... Who is leading us? We're not. We're not able to hear. All right, we're back. Quiet. All right. So I said, my name is Divinus. I learned so much from you, from the topic, the importance of mentorship and um, relationship. That's very, very inspiring for me because over the time in our learning stack, they have also taught us so many things that we cannot actually do it alone. The essence of relationship so when you we are trying to exercise on that so i actually pick that and it means so much to me and after this program i'm going to work towards that to make sure that my relationship with my peers and friends around me and even those that are ahead of me for mentorship and guidance so i will take it very serious so i appreciate you thank you so much you're so welcome. I appreciate you. Now, can I get you? Can you all hear me? Can I get this hand right here to say the other gentleman? Can you hear me? You want him to come back? Yes, I want the one in the blue shirt and the one who spoke. 
uh, to come back so I can speak with them. Or if they can just stand up in front of everybody. That's fine if they can just stand up. Yep. Right there is good. He can stand right there. And then the other one in the blue t-shirt. Okay, go ahead and, and, and uh, mute so that way I don't have the echo, but as long as you can hear me. So thank you all for sharing. What you did is you took inspiration that I shared with you and you shared it with them and you shared it with us. So you just inspired us and you just inspired those behind you. And it took courage because no one wanted to come up, of course, and be on camera and tell what's inside of them. But that's what makes the difference and produces in your life. So I need you to shake your head if you can hear me. Okay, because it's we're way far away. Now the one with the beautiful uh, shirt, you're able to hear me with the hat on? Okay, I wanna make sure. Now, is it okay if I speak a blessing to you all for you all blessing everyone else? If it's okay, do thumbs up. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity for these new young these young men. We thank you that they had the courage, the faith to inspire and to share what was inside of them with us as they released it. I pray for favor, divine favor, divine opportunity for the dreams and visions inside of them to come to pass. I thank you for the resources. I thank you for the support. I thank you for the mentorship. I thank you that they continue to grow and be the next generational leaders from the moment that they stand now in their present and forever future in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And here's what I want to do. Wait, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. Can y'all hear me? Stand back up. I just said, amen. I believe in walking in victory from the inspiration I've received and the care that I live in. Are y'all still listening? The one, I, the one, the one with the hat, I need some, I need some movement. You can still hear me? All right. So because you all said, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to inspire and walk in and share, which let people see my inspired moment to your inspired moment, to encouraging their inspired moment. That's all you have to keep doing in life. So because I've been inspired, I'm going to release and David will figure out how to do it. 100 US dollar seat to both of you all for your dreams and your visions that they come to pass. And that is a seed of faith and that you get a hundredfold return. And no matter what you want to do with it, you do with it as you please. Because I've been inspired. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Jeffrey. I will say that I am not, I'm surprised because I'm not. You have been very exceptional over the years and just reading your profile and to connect. Them. If you didn't do that, I will do it because I am one person that believes that if there is any young person that can connect with people who are more experienced, who have the knowledge, who have the power of guidance and leadership, if they can connect with people like you, then they can connect with anybody on the planet. And I am going to give them some copies of my book and I'm going to add some cash prize to those two young men. Please, round of applause for them. I'm going to have to call real for a few minutes because we're running out of time. Your profile. I want you to say hi 
people, the young people here, you wouldn't use a word of comfort, a word of encouragement. And I also meet Aurelius Christian at Michigan State University. He was introduced to me by Dr. Jeffrey. One thing again, I would want to go back to Dr. Jeffrey is that he's not going to hide introducing you to people that change your life. I didn't ask him to make the choice, did I? That is who he is, and even more. I wouldn't have known Aurelius and Simon, and now we are seeing the most amazing PN. So who is Aurelius Christian? Aurelius, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, David. All right. Aurelius Christian comes from humble beginnings, but has seen extraordinary elevation in his career and life by being the example of what is possible when you believe. Most notably, Aurelius has been recognized and awarded the 10 over regional leadership award for the next generation of leaders by the Lansing Regional Chamber of Commerce in 2022 for rising stars under 35 years old. He won his prestigious recognition at age 24, which is unheard of. He believes that anything is possible with dedication, commitment, and humility. Recently, Aurelius has taken the next step in his personal faith journey and become a Christian minister and under the spiritual covering of the presiding prelate, Bishop Dr. Hugh Daniel Smith of Jabula Worldwide, founded by the Global Ministry Gift to Recognized for his innovation, Mr. Christian is the founder of the Empire Businesses for Minorities which has been resourced with a $2 million grant budget. Businesses have more revenue and national visibility as a result. Service is his purpose, and in 2022, he was appointed by the regional commissioners, governing body of the regional municipality, to serve as the vice chair of all public health centers including 10 locations and serving over 20,000 patients of the most vulnerable population from more than 10 different nations represented overseeing a nearly $30 million USD budget. Additionally, these health centers have been honored and nationally recognized for their care of those with HIV and AIDS. Within three short years, Mr been seeded by local media for its community engagement and highly visible economic development projects serving the capital of Michigan, city of talking directly with the for the mayor of Lansing and acting as community leads of neighborhood associations and the entire city council. Aurelius N is Bachelor's of Arts in Advertising Management from one of the highly regarded universities in the U.S., Michigan State University, where I studied, actually. And is in the process of completing its economic development and national destination, which he completed in December 2024. This powerful addition to his formal education was slightly delayed because Aurelius was selected out of hundreds of candidates statewide to be regional representative of the most comprehensive political training in the West called the Michigan Political Leadership Program for those that are considered to be the future legislators and executive leaders seeking elected post in the Michigan State representative of working directly with the governor of the state. I guess now I understand. Aurelius celebrated his graduation this month in November 2024 while he has accomplished much and is highly sought after mother 
and have been invited as a panel member to some of the largest economic development forums in the state. He knows that this is just the beginning of what his future holds for great impact and community transformation. Ladies and gentlemen, please let us welcome Aurelius Christian. I see, I see the hands clapping I, right here, but thank you, thank you for that introduction, David. I'm extremely appreciative to you uh, for this opportunity. As you shared a little bit uh, before, you know, I remember when you and, and the rest of the Mandela Fellows were here in the United States, and I just remember meeting you at your celebration of completing that program and, you know, just the exciting things that you were working on and everything that, you know, you shared about your purpose and shared about know the reason why you uh, do what you do to see it all come full circle i'm i'm, I'm excited and I'm, and I'm humbled to be here uh, it's morning here in the united states but i want to greet you all with good afternoon it's my distinct privilege and honor to share this momentous milestone with you all as you celebrate uh just the beginning as uh, the honorable dr brown had shared in the rest of your journey and so as i sit here across the globe I'm very, very, very inspired by what's possible and what we can achieve when we embrace destiny, when we commit to service, and when we say yes to our purpose. And so the things that David had read through my bio and you know the um, awards, the recognitions, three short years ago, I could not have imagined being here speaking with Nigeria's current and future leaders. And I couldn't have imagined it because I didn't believe it. And I didn't believe it because I was not knowing of and I was not operating or walking in my purpose. And so that's what I wanna take a few short minutes. I know uh, we're a little bit short on time, but I wanted to take a moment here to talk about moving in purpose. And so I want, I, I believe that my very presence here today um, illustrates the, the testimony and the power of what moving in purpose is. And so when you're moving in purpose, it's critical that first we possess our purpose. We must embrace our purpose. We must discover our unique design, our skills, our gifts, our abilities to know that there is purpose in our lives. And once you take a hold of it, once you embrace it, you unlock the power of what purpose can do in your life. So that as you move in purpose, the intentionality of every action you take manifests and showcases the power of purpose. And so I wanna take a moment here to really define what purpose is. Purpose is our God ordained reason for our existence. It is the God-given call on our life. It's the core of who we are. It's what we were set here to accomplish. Now purpose is the most critical commodity that we can possess. But many times we go throughout life without knowing it. Because without purpose, we can't possess the compass necessary to navigate life's journey. So instead of being intentional and charting the course towards the destiny of destin the destination of our destiny, we leave it to chance. Without purpose, every action, every hard work, every uh, time we take to serve, everything that we do is absent of the impact and the fulfillment necessary to propel us forward. And without purpose, we merely exist without the opportunity to thrive. Going through life without gaining a hold of who we are and what we were meant to do. And so that's why purpose is the most critical thing. It is the most critical commodity that we're able to grab a hold of. And so as I was preparing for this ceremony this, this morning, I was reminded of some of the words of 
Nelson Mandela. And what he shared was that there's no passion in playing small and settling for a life that is less than the one that you are capable of. So when we operate in our purpose, we take a hold, we grab the reins of something greater than ourselves. My life journey is a result of what happens when purpose is introduced into your life. You grab a hold of it and you move into it. A few short years ago, I vividly remember my mother and I, my younger brother, scrambling in panic as the lights were cut off. We, turned, we tried to turn our faucet on and no water would come out. It's the dead heat of winter and we're shivering. Now what happened was there was no money to pay the bill. And so the utility company shut off our lights, shut off our running water and eliminated the heat necessary to keep us warm. And I recall this moment in my life so often because through that humble beginning i knew that this should not be the case for myself for others and so as i graduated through that critical time i recognized that there was more to my ability Fast forward a few years, I had the distinct privilege of traveling to Sierra Leone to install a water filtration system. Now, you might wonder what could have happened in that time in between to where I'm the one having water shut off to being the hands and feet to restoring water. And I say to you on this afternoon, it was possessing my purpose. I recognized that there were gifts within me. As Dr. Brown had shared, in terms of relationship, in terms of mentorship, it takes sometimes people to unlock that in you. Just as he's done for myself and, and for many others, so when you're looking at my story, you're reading my bio, the things that I've accomplished are simply a result of recognizing that the gifts and abilities that I have were meant for more than myself. So my story is really one that shows the power of purpose when we embrace it. For me, discovering my purpose revealed not only my gifts, but how they were meant to serve others. And so the purpose statement that has governed my life and has allowed me to operate in excellence and to move forward towards a, a vision as Dr. Brown had shared that surpasses all my circumstances is this. I desire to create prosperous communities that transform the minds of those that have been programmed to believe in limitations by creating opportunities and environments for people to grow spiritually, to grow physically, to grow professionally, to grow financially, in order to see a destiny that is beyond what they can believe for. Moving in purpose has allowed me to ascend from the humble beginnings I just spoke about to being able to travel to our nation's capital and advocate for billions of dollars for public health centers across the nation, to leading economic empowerment initiatives right here in our state's capital. The power of purpose transcends a job title, it transcends businesses, it transcends a job task, but all of those things, when you grab a hold of your purpose, are leveraged to propel you into a place of destiny 
that you could have never before thought of. And so for me, as I sit here for you all today, I wanted to share that every success I've experienced, every life I've touched, every opportunity I've given stems from me grabbing a hold of, realizing the power of, and moving in my purpose. This isn't exclusive to me. You all have purpose. You all have unique gifts, skills, value. You all are meant to be used of, as instruments of impact to leave the world a better place than you left, than you sought it. And so in, my, in closing, I just wanna share with you three steps in how you move in your purpose. To align yourself with destiny that you're meant to fulfill. So again, discover your unique design. Each of us is gifted. Each of us is uniquely crafted. So take the time to recognize what is it that's placed on your heart as you close your eyes, what is it that you desire to achieve? What is the impact that you desire to make? Harness that. Recognize your unique skills and abilities. And how can you leverage that to achieve that vision? Walking, moving in purpose requires faith because it's faith that fuels your purpose. Walk, moving in purpose will require you so many times to move into the uncomfortable. I'm here now. I would have never imagined being able to speak to you all today. Those who know me best know I'm introverted, I'm reserved. So it takes a lot for me to speak to you all today. But it's the faith in that this is what I'm supposed to be doing that's allowed me to muster the power to be able to address you all today as you embark on your journey. And once you recognize that boldness, that faith that's necessary, you move in your purpose. Every action that you take will be with intentionality. Every opportunity you consider will be with intentionality. Because now you have your compass that tells you which way is north so that you can go forward and not waver, so that you can go forward and not question, so that you can go forward and never look back. Because moving in purpose, it merges every role that we have personal, professional, whether you're a CEO or data analyst, uh, uh, a volunteer for your local nonprofit organization, a father, a husband, purpose transcends and combines all these roles so that as you go forward day by day, you see the manifestation of your destiny. It's critical that we recognize that age, credentials, experiences or lack thereof are subordinate to purpose. I sit here before you today as a, the youngest appointed regional commissioner over a 40 million US dollar public health center. I sit here before you today as a community liaison directly for the mayor of our capital city, speaking across the nation as an expert in economic empowerment. My age would have told you that's impossible. My degrees or my credentials would have told you that's impossible. My experiences or lack thereof would have told you that it's impossible. But because I've possessed my purpose, I've unlocked its power 
and I'm able to move in it to transcend circumstance, to achieve what I've been called here to do, to achieve my destiny. Now the same is possible for you, but the question is, will you say yes to your purpose? So I wanna thank you all for allowing me this moment because as I sit here speaking to you, you've allowed me to move in my purpose. To the exceptional graduates who are celebrating such a critical achievement in your lives, you are leaders, you are visionaries, you are the change makers of today and tomorrow. Step boldly into your purpose, embrace it fully, and let it propel you into the extraordinary future God has uniquely designed for you. Thank you all for the time. Thank you so much, Christian. There is a pretty much easy way of ensuring the fellows of this program graduate. And I tell you the easy way. The easy way is um, the health consultants and teachers will probably just send certificates to the students and we tell them thank you for passing with us and that's it. Goodbye, right? But we have invested time. I came back. Uh, Lagos uh, on I think Monday and in the evening of that Monday I was with my doctor I left being with my doctor on um, two days ago and I was taking medication and still running this program to make sure it's a success and I want to thank one of my colleagues came all the way and to all the fellows who are listening to you there are two things I want them to take away from your presentation. Have a purpose, something that you really know you are going to achieve. There's only one way of succeeding. It is always moving forward with that question. And I remember one time I was in a rural community in my country over a decade ago. Um, we have a lot of people, my colleagues who are working with international organizations, traveling and all of that. Because I was, I'm from a low-income background, I couldn't afford that. But I was really dedicating two years of my life to working in a place. Not so much money, but I love the fact that I was changing lives in community. Guess what? After two years... I got my first international job in Germany and was working with an international organization in Germany. It was from there that my life completely changed. And if there is anything you've not taken out from what you have said, when you find the thing that you are good at, with people who are good at that thing, it is going to be easy actualize your purpose you are on your work today you are shoes the next day you are selling wheel selling and selling and selling i do tell young people do anything everything possible to survive but you are you know why because when you do those things it's easier to discover what you are good at two or four you discover at one point, at one point, I have been selling this one, selling this, selling this, but only one of those products is going to change your life. That will be the product you will build your life around. So that is the message I want us to take. We are going to um, basically not end the online presentations because we have a panel discussion. We have to give certificates to the students. I have books to give to the fellows. And we have certificates and awards to all the distinguished guests of honor here. And let's do all the 45 minutes. So I would love um, someone and PN, um, 30 seconds, just say hi.
uh, you look at the Western mom. So, again, also, Christian. Christian, I am happy to share the progress of the fellows with you, and I would love that you connect with them after this program. I am not the kind of person that holds information and whatever. Whatever can change this life, I am 100% up for it. So I'm going to make sure that they connect with you after this program and see how your journey unfolds. Handling millions of dollars in grant funding for businesses across Lansing for a 26-year-old. Some of you are here. 26-year-old handling millions of dollars in that community should be the person that you should connect to and learn. It doesn't mean bio. He's clearly stated that he was from a humble background. If he can do all of us here, and even more, can do it. Amen. Thank you. So, Safran, Pian, thank you so much. You want to say hi, Pian, Safran? Hello, everyone. I'm Paulina, and it's a great honor to see you all. I just want to send my congratulations to you. And all I can see is a room full of people who carry the seed of greatness in them. So it's very exciting to see a beginning of something bigger in your lives. And I wish you all to have faith, to have vision, to know the victory, to know the value and keep up going keep up the good work Bye. Uh, hello everyone uh, my name is simon and it's a pleasure to be here and bear witness to this momentous occasion and this day in your lives and uh, i'll be brief and i'll say this is that from what we've heard today, you know, I believe that the only limitation on your life is what you believe in. And you have access to the possibilities of your potential when you change your mindset and believe that anything is possible. So as you go today, walk in purpose and be inspired that you can be the brighter future that you want for your lives and for your communities. And you can be the leaders and the change makers for the people that you love and for your friends, your family, and the world as a whole. So congratulations again. It was an honor to be here with you and go on and change the world. Thank you very much, uh, Simon. Thank you. And thank you, Dr. Jeff. Thank you so much, Aurelius. And thank you, my very special and and for hanging around we're going to continue the rest of the program and i would love to introduce to you uh some of the really amazing